Hi and welcome to lesson three here in our kinetics, thermodynamics, and equilibrium unit. In lesson two, we talked about the kinetics of a reaction. Here we're going to talk about how you're expected to represent the kinetics of a chemical reaction through what's called a potential energy diagram. I've given an example of a potential energy diagram up here at the top. We're going to go through it and take a look at what all of these parts are. So let's go in. A potential energy diagram is just a graphical representation of the changes in potential energy that occur during a reaction. We start with our reactants, we end with our products, and in the middle we get our reactants into a state called the activated complex. So we have some unit of energy in our y-axis, it's either enthalpy or it might be labeled H or it might be labeled potential energy. And then we have some unit of time at the bottom, but if we're not paying attention to time and we just want to treat it as instantaneous, the general term is just the reaction coordinate. If you think about what has to happen for a reaction to occur, you can think about what's happening in a potential energy diagram. The first thing that has to happen is that we need to have reactants, and those reactants are going to have some amount of energy stored in them. But right now, they're not reacting. In order to get them to react, you're going to need to put in some amount of energy. That energy is called the activation energy. That's the energy that we add to the reactants until they can react. Once we get them into the reactive state, the term for the reactants in the reactive state is the activated complex. So the activation energy is the amount of energy needed to put into the reactants in order to form the activation complex at what's called the transition state in the reaction. And then of course, the reactants are going to react. As they do that, bonds are going to be made, energy is going to be released, and our products are going to have some final amount of energy stored in their bonds. That's what needs to be shown in a potential energy diagram. I hope that this makes sense. If you have any questions about it, now would be a good time to sketch any diagrams and write down any questions that you have. We can represent any reaction as a potential energy diagram, and that of course includes endothermic and exothermic reactions. Here I've got an example of an endothermic and an exothermic potential energy diagram. I hope you can tell which one is which. Of course, if you can't, you can always take the energy in the products and subtract the energy in the reactants from it, figure out if that's positive or negative, and use that in order to tell the difference. In the example on the left, the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants would be a positive value because it's a larger number minus a smaller number. That's a positive sign, which means it's an endothermic reaction. And the one on the right is an exothermic reaction because the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants is a negative value. In the reaction on the left, since we had to put energy in, we would expect the temperature of our surroundings to go down. In the reaction on the right, we're releasing energy, we would expect the temperature of our surroundings to go up. And of course, the potential energy of our products is going to be greater than the potential energy of the reactants on the right, whereas the potential energy of the products is going to be less than the potential energy of the reactants on the left. The other thing that we can understand by looking at a potential energy diagram is the effect of a catalyst. A catalyst lowers the activation energy necessary for a reaction to occur. We need to put in less energy to get our reactants into the transition state. This potential energy diagram shows you the difference. You can see that the red arrow represents the activation energy of the catalyzed reaction, and you can see that it's considerably shorter than the black arrow, which is the activation energy of the uncatalyzed reaction. That's what a catalyst does. That's all it does, really, is provide a different pathway at a lower activation energy, which increases the rate of the reaction. If you have any questions about catalysts, now would be a good time to write them down before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of potential energy diagrams. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can represent endothermic and exothermic reactions as potential energy diagrams. Also make sure that you can interpret potential energy diagrams to determine the enthalpy of products, the enthalpy of reactants, the activation energy, and the heat of a reaction. Finally, make sure that you can represent the effect of a catalyst on the potential energy diagram of a reaction. If you can do all these things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them for me below the video and you can always get in touch with me. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.